Okay, in this uh, short video we're going to look at um, importing um, or creating a sprite sheet in Blender uh, or in Photoshop from Blender. So I'm going to open up um, my Mac here and bring this in as a sprite sheet. So this is, you know, there's video tutorials on the, the YouTube channel on how, how to make this. Um, and it's not straightforward. If you've never used Blender before, you'll struggle. It's uh, <clears throat> fairly complex. Not not impossible, but but difficult. Um, so it took me about two hours to make this. Um, so a decent amount of work. Um, so what we want to look at is how to get this model into Unity as a two D sprite sheet. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move this light here crank up the amount of light it's pouring out, go to rendered view, change the color of it a little bit, uh, there we go, and what we want to do is we want to tell Blender to, down here, this is in the render settings, to export a transparent background, and just to be double sure here, we'll go in and set the alpha channel here to be um, the background to be uh, transparent as well um, so we have another point light here which is blue and it's giving us a blue leg so I'm not, not liking that so we'll try and make that a bit whiter there we go um, okay uh, didn't make a huge difference but it's not too bad um, so if we do a very quick test render, press the render button, we will get um, this image, which is interesting, um, but definitely not usable in a two-dimensional side-scrolling game. Maybe we could use it as a menu, but um, not much use to us in the game engine, in gameplay. So we'll escape out of that, and oh, let me turn on some screen casting here so you can see what keys I'm pressing. Um, screen casting, and start display. So what we want is, I'm going to go back to solid mode here, I want to um, find my camera. At the moment the camera is giving me, when I look through it, I press zero on the numpad, it's giving me a perspective. And I don't want perspective, I want autographic. So I want to take this camera and go Alt or Alt G, which resets it to the origin, or minus 90. Um, no, let's not do that. Let's go or minus 90 that way, or 90, and then GX. So, and move it up a little bit. So I'm going to press 0 and look through. So this is my this is what my camera sees now. And over here in the camera uh, properties, I'm going to change my orthographic scaling. And I can go G and move the camera. I probably need to zoom out a little bit more. Right there. Now, um, so that's not a bad framing. So I'll do a very quick test render. And now what we see is a profile. So this is what we'll end up using in our game. So we want to export the animation uh, like this here. However, what we don't want is um, something this big. This is um, full HD. So this is a HD recording you're looking at. So that's sort of the quality of it there. We don't need sprites that big. We need sprites to be about as big as this cockpit area here. Um, because they won't be that big on screen in, in our game. So I'm going to set this to be 50%, which is still too big, but um, it'll be basically quarter screen size. So not too dissimilar to the size this uh, of the camera view here. Uh, still too big, but um, you know it gives us a bit of scope for quality. 
I, I need to tell Blender to export a PNG file because PNG files support alpha channels and we'll call it mech walk and Blender will add in you know, dot zero zero one to dot two etc. Now the other thing we need to look at here is our frames um, this is set up to be 200 frames long but actually it repeats after 50 so we only need 50 frames it's a two second walk cycle and we don't need every frame we don't want 50 images because that'll be too dense uh, an animation for unity to play back so we'll get every third frame which will get it give us about 18 frames uh, which will give us a very smooth animation in unity you can get away with maybe 12 but um, for now we'll go with this so I'm gonna go animation and as I said so this is the the size it's rendering here is rendering in cycles render so if you're wondering how I made it or how I colored it in all the textures etc how I put in the skeleton animated it there's lots of videos there on YouTube uh, on this YouTube channel to show you how to do that and uh, it's very quick so it's about four and a half seconds of frame for a render we're on frame 19 uh, and you'll see it jumps it's 20 frame 22 because we're going in steps of three um, so I'm nearly there very good so about six more I think and this is um, rendering off my GPU which is a bit faster than if I'd gone with CPU rendering although it's a four or it's an eight core processor here but it's um, if you can render off your graphics card if your graphics card supports and if the scene doesn't take up too much RAM and this doesn't there's barely any RAM going in here it's only 30 meg of RAM I think I've got 2 gig on the card so that's us finished there at 49 uh, but if you can GPU render it's much quicker so I'm gonna go file save as and we'll save this as step 7 just so I keep my um, original file so I can minimize that and uh, now in Photoshop what do I want to do I'm going to go file new and I want a 2048 by 2048 image with a transparent background and then I'm going to open some of these images that are in this folder here so we'll start by opening maybe the first uh, oops first one two first six so we'll open them now Let's take this first one and we're going to drag and drop it in here. Now, this should not have a black background, it should be transparent. So, uh, I'm going to go render them again and figure out why that didn't work. Uh, so, these should be coming into blender with um, so I'm going to delete that layer um, so they should be coming in here into Photoshop without like this they should have transparency built in so I press render and this is frame 1 I'm going to hit F3 and save over this file here and it's got RGBA selected so it should give me um, the desired look so I'll close that one and let's go file open and that works so I have a horrid feeling I'm gonna have to do this frame by frame which I shouldn't have to do because the only difference between um, what I did the first time and the second time was I hit the animation button um, Ah, okay I see my error so this is RGB and this is RGBA which is color and color with alpha so I need to turn that button on and all of my problems will be solved so very simple um, choices and selections can make profound differences so we had exported the whole sequence without any alpha channel so hopefully now when we go back and look at this uh, set of images that will come out rendered images they'll all have an alpha channel so I'm going to flick back into Photoshop 
um, and let's just have a quick look at um, this image so while we're waiting for that to um, render we'll go view and we'll come in here to my uh, I'm gonna go new guide horizontal and, and position this okay so what we want to do is we want to place um, these images all in a line and um, it doesn't really matter if I go one two three four and if it goes backwards or forwards it doesn't it's not really hugely important to as long as they're in the correct sequence so this is nearly done that's its last frame there so let's save this with the correct settings and go back here and open this so file open and there we go, you can see that they've got alpha channels on them. So I'll open up the next, uh, up as far as 13. So this is number four. Let me go back here. So I'll drag in number four. And the only important thing is that they don't overlap at all. So four is in, I can close four. Um, this is number one, I don't need that one anymore. So this is number seven goes in here now, it doesn't have to be absolutely exact when I'm putting them in but if I get them right or approximately right at this stage then I won't have any extra work to do later on and let's see if we get one more in there we might so if I'm a bit more economical in my positioning might get one last one on this line which cool which will work well okay so that was number 13 so now let's open the rest so open so we'll open 16 to 25 if we go back here, so let me make this a bit bigger. There we go. So I'm going to go view, um, new guide, horizontal, and again just move this one down, give myself a guide. So this is 16, this is my next frame, I can go in there. Um, there is a way to create uh, macros in Photoshop which are sort of like small programs um, you can record an import sequence um, I've never done that with this process but I'm sure it is possible um, to automate this so that you're not having to do absolutely everything by hand however that's what we're doing now so file open and 25 so 28 to 37 so we'll bring in the rest of them so there's eight coming in now okay and so 28 can go in there we close it again we need to add in a new guide New guide, horizontal, um, just move it down from the top. So this is, like I said, quite a manual sort of uh, piece of work. So uh, 31 is my next make. And I'm going to move this guide down a little bit. And place you there. Now, like I said, these, each sprite I'm using here, I haven't rescaled the sprite. Probably should have. Um, but, uh, like I said, we'll get great quality off these in uh, in Unity. Um, 
hopefully not to the detriment of performance in terms of processor but um, they're not that big so we will survive um, but you would normally in a, a sprite sheet this size get maybe five or six animations and you get a walk cycle, a run cycle um, so these are quite sort of oversized so when we're doing this again probably won't be as big okay and I could probably fuse the end of the page but there we go and drop you there and drop you there okay so that's them all in we'll give um, yeah we'll just paint we'll call this um, so mech walking Okay, so that's my sprite sheet. I'm going to go file, save as. Again, keep it as a PNG file. I'm going to save it in here and I'll call this um, mech um, walking sprite sheet. Excellent. Now, let's go into Unity. So I'm just going to launch up very quickly the uh, very basic movement um, we were doing with um, our stick person. And swap out our stick person for our mech. So here we go. So let's import into our sprite folder. So import new asset and we go to our desktop. And let's find this sprite sheet. There it is there. So we import it. Now when it comes in, it'll come in as before, like a single sheet. So we need to say multiple and then apply. And then after that, we'll go to our sprite editor and we'll tell it to slice it which we'll do, and then we need to delete all these uh, and it's literally hitting the delete key and yeah, let's make sure it hasn't got anything oh, I made a new one so, that's all good and hit apply okay, now we're going to take our character here and we're going to delete that and I'm going to replace this with our mech now we want to make an animation for this we're going to go window animation and it says that you know it has no animation so we'll go create and again we'll you know right over this first one do I want to replace it yeah so now here I want to take all of these and drag and drop them in and we'll press play and there he is walking at 60 frames so we'll slow this down maybe to 12 and let's go up to 18 okay maybe back to 12 <laughs> okay so that's not a bad animation it's fairly fluid um okay so um this is the controller for our original sprite and if i was going to use that original sprite i would keep it but i'm going to delete it because um, we've no need for it now when i made the new walk cycle it automatically made a new controller so now over here it's loaded the controller in by default so I've got my animator but what I don't have on this is I don't have a 2D physics uh, rigid body I don't have a 2D physics uh, box collider 
I need to move it a little bit. Uh, we'll move it across this way. So there's a. Need to edit that. The only thing we have to put in now is our script. So if I close this up and go back to script, player movement. So if I go back to my player, so let's call this player and tag it player and drag in my script. So let's go play. Uh, and it'll start eventually. There we go. And I can go. Okay, so my sprite, we drew the sprite facing the other direction, so I need to just tweak down the script. But, you know, it's doing a moonwalk. That's not too bad, though. Okay. So that's not, uh, not a bad animation to have in our game. And keep in mind, we can scale this entirely so if I scale it by say 0.5 and then 0.5 on Y and you can see that the box collider has scaled with the sprite when I press play Ooh. interesting and um, that's because in our script we've given it when we flip we've given it a, an X value and a Y value of minus one and plus one relative so if you look here at the x value it's 0.5 and it'll stay like that until I press key and now it's gone back to its original width but we can just tweak the script and that won't happen um, okay so with a small bit of tweaking that would be very useful and very good animation so I'm going to stop at that now because we've got the 22 minutes and then what we'll look at next is um, I'm going to use this character here to jump and work in our very simple kind of Donkey Kong game.